Master Liu Bei, it is an honor to meet you. And you are... Son of the God of War. Another victory in honor of my father. I must fight in a way that befits the son of a God of War. Another victory in honor of my father. The son of the God of War cannot be defeated. On behalf of my father, I shall stand by the side of my lord. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the uh, channel. Welcome back to the series where we're counting down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming in at number 48, we have Guan Ping. Guan Ping is one of Guan Yu's son. He's actually his eldest child, making him the older brother of Guan Jing, Guan Zuo, and Guan Yin Ping. He is given a minor mention in historical text, but Romance of the Three Kingdoms identifies him as Guan Yu's adopted son, who helped Liu Bei's conquest throughout Hanzhong. Before we jump into how Guan Ping has changed since his Playboy debut back in Dynasty Warriors 5, let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Guan Ping is up here at number 48. In the first popularity poll, Guan Ping receives 530 votes out of a total of 75,000, putting him down at the 55th spot. In the second popularity poll, Guan Yu jumps up to the 49th spot. And then in my personal rankings, Guan Yu jumps up to the 37th spot. So for me, Guan Ping is the highest among the three polls because... You know, I like Guan Ping. He was generally a character that I played. He wasn't my favorite or anything like that, but I generally like to play as him. And I always liked the way he looked and, you know, the way he fought and stuff like that. And we'll get more into that when we talk about his weapon style and his changes with his appearance. But Guan Ping was a likable character for me. And I didn't really mind playing through his story or playing with him. I generally liked the character. And that's why he's relatively high for me. In the Dynasty Warriors series, Guan Ping is a stalwart and brave general. He idolizes his father, striving to live up to his father's image which is very evident. It's very evident among all of Guan Yu's children. They always say something like, you know, I'm the son of the God of War, you can't beat me. We are trying to be worthy as children of the God of War. You know, I can't let you beat me because I am the son of the God of War. I have his power, his strength. And uh, because of the reputation that, you know, their father had, all of his children did the best they could to strive and live up to the, you know, legend and the power that Guan Yu was known for. Within the series, Guan Ping is a relatively humble and chivalrous character he has the quality that most characters in the game have to protect the ones that are closest to him especially the ones in his kingdom his family and uh, the people that he cherishes the most however due to his youth he can be quite naive and reckless on the field and that's more evident in some of the earlier games and uh, just the way he looks you can see that kind of reckless manner but as he progresses the game guan ping's personality seems to have uh, kind of chilled out a little bit he's not as reckless as he was in perhaps the first game he was playable in dynasty warriors 9 because of the introduction and the inclusion of his you know younger siblings he's there to act as a wise and serious older brother for his siblings so that way he can set an example for them as they're looking up to him and of course their father and in turn guan yu is proud to see guan ping interacting with his younger brothers and sisters because it reminds him of his own brotherhood but with that being said let's go ahead and jump into how guan ping has changed starting off with his appearance guan ping's appearance remains relatively the same except for dynasty warrior 6. every other game he looks pretty much the same he's got the same hairstyle relatively the same outfit and uh, dynasty warrior 6 is the only game he kind of noticeably strives away from that his hair is a little bit different his outfit's a little bit different the color scheme i think is a little bit different as well he's still part of the shoe kingdom but just a little bit different and like i said i generally like guan ping because of the way he looks and dynasty warriors 6 it wasn't the best look for him and i'm glad they went back to how he kind of looked in dynasty warriors 5 that's kind of what suits him and they stuck with that all the way up into the newest game but i can't complain too much about the way he looks i think he looks just fine and uh, anyone that's a guan ping fan will definitely enjoy the way he looks uh currently Moving on to his weapon style, uh, Guan Ping actually has the exact same weapon as the previous Dynasty Warriors character that we just covered, Sha Ho Ba. He has the Shan Ma Dao. So he has the giant sword, the anti-cavalry weapon like I talked about in my previous video. And uh, that is what I've known Guan Ping. Like that's like when you think of the great sword in, Di in the Dynasty Warriors series, I think of Guan Ping. He was the person that was introduced with it. And uh, that's when I see the Shan Ma Dao and I think of the great sword. I think of Guan Ping. In Dynasty Warriors 6, because of the cloning issue that they had when they jumped from the previous gen to the current gen at the time, he got the short G, which is basically a uh, halberd, and that's basically what he had was a clone weapon that many other characters used. It was probably one of my favorite cloned weapons from the sixth installment, but um, it wasn't a unique weapon just to him. A lot of other people had that weapon as well, and uh, it was an okay weapon. The giant sword, the great sword, the you know, Jean Madao definitely fits him a lot better. His Musao attacks in each of the games 
Um, they're pretty good. I think in Dynasty Warriors seven through nine, the Musao attacks are all the same. They're pretty. They're pretty similar. Like they're very, very similar. Um, Dynasty Warriors five obviously was different. Dynasty Warriors six was obviously different because of the clone weapon. But the Musao attacks were okay. They were fine. Um, did a good amount of damage. And if I was ever in danger, I popped a Musao attack, got out of danger, and uh, it was a pretty standard Musao attack. Nothing too crazy. And hopefully, moving forward in the newest game, they'll stick with the Great Sword for Guan Ping, because I believe it fits him pretty well. All right, moving on to his voice acting. Uh, Guan Ping's voice acting is pretty good. Can't complain too much about it. He's had two different voice actors. He's had one for Dynasty Warriors 5 through Dynasty Warriors 8, and then he's had a new one for Dynasty Warriors 9. Um, obviously, I'm more tailored and, I guess, biased towards the Dynasty Warriors 5 through 8 one because he was his voice actor for uh, three different games. I will stay here in the castle and keep the enemy occupied. But the voice acting in Dynasty Warriors 9 is just fine. I think it sounds relatively good for him. The plan to ensure that we stand as equals alongside the force of Cao Cao and Master Sun Quan. Do you really think we can do that? Yeah, especially with the change, not the change, but like the progression in his personality um, from the more reckless, like, you know, I'm going to do whatever it takes to, you know, win kind of thing to more of a leader and an example. You can see that throughout the Dynasty Warriors 9 um, story. You can see he's getting involved, trying to find ways to um, strategically help out Liu Bei or his dad or help the kingdom get themselves in an advantageous position in order to, you know, secure a specific area or just pushing for acquiring Liu Bei's vision, which was, you know, benevolence and virtue and uh, all that good stuff. But a uh, fun fact about the voice actor from Dynasty Wars 5 through 8, uh, he actually voices Kagura from Boruto, Inosuke from Demon Slayer, and the biggest one is Aaron Yeager from Attack on Titan. I did not know that Guan Ping was voiced by a legendary voice actor. But anyway, moving on to his uh, significant battles, his relationships with other officers, and his death. Let's start off with his relationships. The most significant relationships that he has among the Shu Kingdom, obviously he's going to have a very close relationship with his family, so... Guan Yu has a very close relationship with Guan Jing, Guan Suo, and Guan Yin Ping. They're all family. They're all going to get along. Very, very close. Uh, obvious relationship there. Again, he wants to strive to become as, as good of a warrior as he can to fill the shoes that Guan Yu, the legacy that Guan Yu has created for his family. He wants to strive for that. He wants to, you know, become a good role model for the people watching him, his, you know, his younger siblings and any other younger officers that are looking up to Guan Ping. Guan Ping has been battling with Guan Yu for quite some time. When he first got adopted uh, by Guan Yu, he's been, the, he, I mean, he's been in a lot of battles. He had a lot of experience. He had a lot of knowledge to share with uh, his younger siblings and any other younger officers that he was with, but a uh, very close relationship with his family. The other relationships that he has is with Zhou Song, Zhao Yun, and Jing Sai. So the relationship with Zhao Yun and Zhou Song was more evident in the latest game than in the earlier games. In the earlier games, he had a strong relationship with Guan Yu and Jing Sai. So uh, Zhou Song and Zhao Yun, they were, he seemed to have a lot of, res of course, a lot of respect for Zhao Yun. He was a uh, experienced warrior at the time. He was obviously known for a lot. And uh, Guan Ping was there witnessing a lot of the accolades and the things that Zhao Yun is known for. Like a lot of the heroic things that he did, Guan Ping was there witnessing those things happen. So he had a lot of respect for him. They had a couple of interactions and conversations and whatever Guan Ping could do to help Xiao Yun, whatever task it was, he was there 100% to help him out. Zhou Song, he had a close relationship with as well. Again, it wasn't really blossomed until Dynasty Warriors 9 when Zhou Song became a playable character and uh, they had a lot of interactions with each other. Zhou Song was another admirer of Guan Yu, so he's very close to Guan Yu. He's always around and because Guan Ping is Guan Yu's son, Zhou Song and Guan Ping are going to have interactions just because of the inherent admiration that they both have for Guan Yu. So they had a lot of interactions within Dynasty Warriors 9 talking about strategies or what they should do to, you know, help Guan Yu. They even left Jing Province at one point together to go help, you know, Liu Bei and Han Zhang. Then they went back to Jing Province together and uh, they just seemed to be very close. And they were almost like, you know, brothers in a sense of how close they were and just getting along and stuff like that. And they seemed to have a pretty close relationship, at least in the latest game when Zhou Song became a playable character. And then finally, his relationship with Jing Sai. Uh, it was more evident in the earlier games when Liu Shan was not a playable character. Uh, it seemed to be a friendly and or romantic relationship that Xing Tsai and Guan Ping had. But that relationship, at least romantically, would fade when Liu Shan became a playable character because Xing Tsai, we've gone over Liu Shan. Xing Tsai was Liu Shan's bodyguard, but I believe the admiration that she showed for Liu Shan 
could have also been interpreted as romantic. None of the games really like delve into that, like because Liu Shan and Jing Sai have been around uh, for quite a few titles, but none of the games really go into that. Of course, Liu Shan shows his appreciation for her, for being there for him and uh, offering her, you know, protection and everything like that, being, you know, his bodyguard. I'm not too sure about the romantic side of it because of Jing Sai's admiration for Liu Shan. And perhaps that admiration was even a romantic interest, but I'm not entirely too sure about that. But Jing Sai and Guan Ping had a close relationship because of that and also because that they were both like the eldest of the, uh, you know, Zhang Fei and Guan Yu duos. Jing Sai was, you know, Zhang Fei's oldest child and then Guan Ping was Guan Yu's oldest child. So they kind of, you know, they're the same age. They had that relationship of maybe training together or growing up together they're around the same age and perhaps shared that mutual feelings of their dads being brothers and that's you know perhaps where their relationship grew from and then finally let's talk about guan ping's death and it kind of relates to zing size you know we don't really know what would happen i guess in hypotheticals I don't really remember any of the games messing with it, but but the reason that Guan Ping and Jing Sai didn't, you know, have really a chance to grow romantically or whatever it was is because Guan Ping dies at the Battle of Fawn Castle. So in this battle, this is where, you know, Wei and Wu, you know, join together and they attack Guan Yu at Fan Castle. They surround him, they capture him, and they execute him and Guan Ping and Zhou Song. All of them get killed at the Battle of Fawn Castle. And uh, unfortunately, Guan Ping's uh, life and his story comes to an abrupt end in the latest game. Of course, there are hypotheticals in like Dynasty Warriors 5 and I believe Dynasty Warriors 8 where that doesn't happen. And you can, you know, what if they survived kind of thing. But historically, that's where he dies. There's no way to know if him and Jing Sai's relationship would have blossomed after that because he passes away so early. But... Yeah, he dies at the Battle of Fawn Castle. Guan Yu originally attacks Fawn Castle, takes the castle away from Sao Ren. Sao Ren holds out. Wei reinforcements come in. Wu reinforcements come in. You know, Guan Yu is blindsided. When we get to Guan Yu, we'll talk all more about that and, you know, the politics behind it and, and talk about why they were betrayed and, you know, the animosity that was growing up until that point. But unfortunately, that is the battle that Guan Ping passes away. He gets killed in. None of the games really show his death uh, explicitly, the, the Battle of Fawn Castle is mainly, like, that's Guan Yu's, you know, shining moment. That's when he passes away. That's, where, that's his death. So every game is really focused on Guan Yu being killed. And when we get to Guan Yu, we'll talk more about it. But Guan Ping doesn't have any explicit, like, death scenes where someone, like, duels him and he gets killed. But if that is the battle he gets killed, it's implied that he's captured and executed. And um, that is the end of Guan Ping. But that's all I have for Guan Ping here and how he's changed. He's been in the games of Dynasty Warriors 5, he's gone through a couple of weapon changes and he has appearance changed a little bit, but he's pretty much the same character he's been since the beginning of the, you know, his playable debut. And I like him as a character. He's not one of my favorites or anything, but he's definitely not like one of my least favorites. He's definitely a character that I would get around to playing after I go through my favorites in Shu, but I don't have anything against Guan Ping. I thought he was a decent character and I really like his bond that you can see grow when, when his siblings become playable characters you see that bond at the end and it's nice to see that that he has that with certain characters and stuff like that but uh, of course he's gonna have that strive to become like Guan Yu just like all of his other children that's why I teased it in the beginning because they all like to you know emphasize who they are and we're the son of God of war. We're the ch children of the God of war. We're, you know, we're strong because of him. We're going to be like him. We can't lose because we're the, you know, ch children of the God of war. And, but that's all I really have for Guan Ping here, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely appreciate like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think about Guan Ping. If you guys use him or, you know, if you guys, you know, enjoy using him or whatever it is, let me know down in the comment section and I'll get to it. But, but that's all I have, guys. Number 47 is coming soon. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Wait.